ready for me? I am. Go ahead and do it. Well, I won't write it. Well, I will write it. Um, the women's July 8th. Did you see Linda Ridgely? Yeah. Okay. That's abbreviated for Linda Ridgely since we talked. Okay, what about the Normans on July 8th? Oh, okay, good. All right, let's, uh, here we are, uh, all few of us, and uh, doing the best we can. Uh, the uh, get a button, although everything in there that I saw is uh, not new, so, but uh, get one anyway. The Normans adoption, July 8th, uh, be praying for them. They're, uh, it's a big thing for them, and we want to keep them in our prayers. Linda Ridgely, as you probably saw in the paper, passed away. And so Jerry will finally find out if she's going to get to go to heaven, despite her being a what? Methodist? Lutheran? I, we'll see it in the paper. I can't recall. But anyway, she, Jerry worried about that all his life. Uh, we remember that. And uh, the... Uh, Time goes by. Uh, tonight, Greg will have a class. Uh, Ken is up front, must be going to lead some songs for us. And uh, we'll start out with a prayer. Bobby, you want to lead us in a prayer? Don't you want to hear a positive prayer? Father, we come to this time, your children, together to show our love we come together, Father, to study, to learn, to grow. And as we do these things, Father, we step towards the light every day. We ask, Father, that when we step towards that light, we learn more about you. We more learn more of Jesus and the way that we need to live our life in this world. We know, Father, that the light is in you, and that's why we continue to move from heavenly souls to you. Father, as we do come together this evening, minds to be open to receive the word, to strengthen our souls with the word that you've given to us through your inspired writers. Again, we say thank you. Father, we have many of our loved ones that have earthly problems. We ask that you would lift them. Ones that have lost loved ones, we ask that you would lift families. Ones that have illnesses, we ask that you would gather the people and the doctors that are dealing with these things. To give them strength, Father, as we continue our lives on this earth, we know that we need to continue to look to you for our strength and our love. We say thank you for that. We also ask, Father, that we would follow the steps that Jesus has placed here. As we live our lives to strive to be with him step by step, we thank you for that this opportunity. Continue to be with us, Father, because we know we have fallen. Please turn to number 184. <clears throat> 184. God is a fountain with 10,000 blessings flow to Oh, 
Uh, 139. <clears throat> My voice is not the strongest tonight, but I think this would be a good song for us to sing. <clears throat> 139. For in years of fear are teeming with the waves of ripened grain. For in years a gold is gleaming o'er the sunny slope and plain. Hold o'er my beat. 
The reading is 1 John. One through five. First John one through five. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked at, and our hands have touched, this we proclaim concerning the word of the of life. The life appeared we have seen it and testified to it. We proclaim to you the eternal life which was with the Father and has appeared to us. We proclaim to you what we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us and our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son, Jesus Christ. We write this to make our joy complete. This is the message we have heard from him and declare to him, God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. Classrooms as needed, classes. Will we say dismissed to our classes or something like that? Uh, ba, 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 ba. Uh, ba, ba, ba. You won't be able to get that out of your mind. Uh, right. Uh, Yes. Uh, I love that one. So that's good. Uh, okay. So first John tonight as we uh whoa. First John tonight. Uh as we uh we wrapped up almost everything that I wanted to touch on from uh John's gospel last week, and when I say almost, there's just one really, uh, I think, pretty uh, special connection that we can make here even from uh, the beginning of, of 1 John. So we'll, we're going to take a look at this first paragraph, and you, if you were reading along or if you uh, were looking along in any way uh, in a Bible or uh, on, on something, you saw that we added, right, I added uh, one verse to the reading, that first paragraph, is always broken at, at the end of verse four, and we had, we read through verse five tonight uh, on purpose so that we could see um, this is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you that God is light and in him is no darkness. Okay, so uh, which piece of paper? All right, let's start this way. I always, I always like to start with um, authorship and background a little bit when we, sorry, when we start a new uh, uh, text study, a new, a new book study. And we're just going to walk through the letters of John since we did the Gospel of John in our Bible, our Wednesday night Bible study, and we're going to continue. Obviously, we're going to continue that uh, in our uh, Sunday morning preaching. Uh, but I thought we would just take this time to work through the, the letters, 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, and uh, see, what, uh, see what we have to, uh, uh, I think we're going to see some, some really good things in here. Obviously, there's great, uh, great messages probably that we're very familiar with uh, from 1st from John, especially 1st uh, John, 2nd John, 3rd John are just so short we may not have ever spent too much time uh, in, in that, but um, uh, here we go. Mm, all right, so authorship and background. First John, anyone care to take a guess at the authorship and background 
of the letter that we call 1 John. James the brother. <laughs> Thank you, Jerry. Thank you. I love that. Yes, good one. James's brother. Very good. Very good. Uh, John. So I'll, I'll point out here that we have... Uh, uh, At the beginning of uh, first or the second letter of John, I'm, I'm swerving here. At the beginning of, the, of, of Second John, we have the elder to the elect lady. And at the beginning of Third John, we have the beginning of this. It says, first one, the elder to the beloved uh, Gaius, whom I love in the truth. At the beginning of 1 John, chapter 1, we have Oh, come on, play along. Somebody, somebody jump on in and, and play along. What do we have at the beginning of, of uh, first, the letter 1 John? Yes, well, it, it jumps right in there, doesn't he? Doesn't he? Okay, so, and we could look at this and we could uh, look in another, just another direction. We're, we're very familiar with, uh, I see your grin. One, uh, you're ready. Uh, we're from very familiar with Paul's writings and the letters, uh, the various letters that he writes. And every one of them, oh, I think I can be that strong. Yeah, Paul's letters begin with What? Okay, a, a greeting, a greetings from the writer. And, and uh, uh, I like to make this uh, little comparison. We write a letter in our modern uh, structure. We say dear to someone, right? And then at the very end, we say, you know, uh, sincerely or uh, love or whatever. And then you sign it at the end. And, and we're familiar with that uh, in terms of reading through the New Testament. We say... Uh, Paul writes to the uh, to the elder uh, or the elder to the beloved Gaius at the you know, third John. We have this statement of here I Paul am writing to you or I John now the, the elder here. So uh, my point is, we could look at the the um, we say the the internal uh, evidence the whatever's written in each in every uh, book of the New Testament. And First John doesn't make that declaration. He doesn't make that declaration and. and I, uh, I know I've used this as an illustration before, um, though we've not gone through this step by step. I, I love the beginning of this because it's not that letter that says, uh, Dear Harry, thanks for your business. We appreciate you stopping by the store today. Uh, sincerely, uh, who's of what's it's? It's not. John begins this, and, and I almost... Uh, yeah, I picture him, that which was from the beginning, that which we have heard, which we've seen. Okay, do you get that tone of voice and that little uh, gesture there? Uh, I really picture John just getting so excited. Next. Oh, I said it. I said John. Uh, next. Uh, we have in here much more of an illustration or an example of uh, an oration or uh, not a letter that was written, but maybe a written sermon that we have. And, um, hmm, yeah. And uh, the illustration here, in fact, every, every uh, oh, I won't say every, there are always those exceptions to the uh, Bible historians that will say, well, John, it could have been this, there could have been another John, there could have been this. But what we do see through most uh, commentators and scholars, they'll say this, uh, the writing between these three letters, the styles are all so much the same that we know that these are together. These, these letters are, the first, second, third John, we say, are, are very similar identical in their style and then they say and this is stylistically in the style of writing the same as the gospel of John this uh, you know, uh, really fine uh, Greek we say sometimes we say um, 
boy, those uh, followers of Jesus from Galilee, they were fishermen, they were uneducated. Well, apparently James and John probably had uh, a, a little bit more education. Uh, after all we read, you know, they, they had a, their, a family business. They had, uh, uh, there were others there that were with uh, their father as they were uh, fishing. So we know, they, you know maybe they had uh, some uh, some education, and certainly by the time, and we know this is later in his life, by the time John's writing these, he has a, a very uh, uh, distinct and a, and a fantastic style uh, of writing. Um, Bobby, did you want to add anything as we were starting? You said... Well, what, you, you, what you're discussing and going through right at the moment is, yes, there are several contemporary scholars that say that, no, this is not John the Apostle. John the Elder. Well, are they one and the same? Because we know that John sort of lived the last part of his life in Ephesus as an elder of the body. So, would he have up beside elder? We'll see that in the last two. Yeah. But could it be someone else? There was a thought process back then, or even later than that, that John taught others. And this could have been one of the others that wrote this. I don't think so. You're right. Not, not in my opinion. You're right. You when did. He starts off. He's talking about the life. Where we, when we go back to John, the gospel, what is he talking about throughout the entire gospel? Jesus, the light. Yeah. And when he starts off this way, to me, there's no doubt about it. Good. Good. Thank you. You did your homework when we said we were going to uh, study First John. That's perfect. It's, that's exactly what we, what we read. And I'm glad you tagged into that last thing. We've spent so much of this Wednesday night study pointing to the themes of John. There are so many. But light and darkness is uh, one that, that just uh, absolutely repeated again and again and again. Um, one other thing about this style and, and you can see this. So rather than being a, a letter or something that might march step, 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 step through uh, a process, through an outline, um, John is using uh, a, a classical writing technique uh, that, it, that they call uh, amplification. And what I want to describe to you is uh, we have three major themes that keep coming up. Uh, life and love and truth. Now, we'll see tonight that there's also another kind of an overriding uh, theme that we keep coming back and plugging those things into uh, also. But just take, let's take these three. And, and what we have is in uh, some of these ancient writings, this idea of amplification uh, would be we'd, we'd come to a topic and then we'd go around and we'd hit it again, and then we'd hit it again, and then we'd hit it again. And uh, it's described as, I, mean, I, I had, to, had to look this up and find the details, it's described as cyclical, uh, it uses repetition, so we come around and around and around. Uh, and sometimes hyperbole, so sometimes we'll see something that uh, sounds, uh, you know, like I said, hyperbole, and then uh, contrast. And uh, in fact, some, one of them said stark contrast is a characteristic of this. So hyperbole and stark contrast are characteristics of this uh, style of writing. So you have, um, uh, when you hit life, and then you come back around and you hit it again, there may be a different twist to it, or maybe, uh, right? And you come back around and then you hit truth, uh, the theme of truth. And then there might be some uh, uh, contrasting illustration for that. Okay, that's so authorship and background. Uh, uh, I uh, say this is the same John, a gospel writer, John, uh, first, second, and third John. And yes, Bobby did mention that probably the the. Um, the main competing idea is that this John the Elder might be a very early disciple of Jesus. Um, and yes, some would say maybe even a disciple of John, but usually it's a very early disciple of Jesus who can also speak with this eyewitness authority, uh, but, but not yet uh, John. Last thing I want to say about this, I want to draw your attention back to uh, Sunday. 
I pulled out uh, from Luke this description of uh, Jesus wanting to go through Samaria. And he sends his followers, he sends his disciples on ahead of him specifically to make arrangements of where they might stay. And it was a great illustration of exactly what was a, um, a tradition or a custom is the word I want. A custom in that day, Samaritans didn't like the Jews so much that, you know, I want to rent a room tonight. Well, where are you... Where are you traveling from and where are you traveling to? And if you're traveling from Jerusalem or if you're traveling to Jerusalem, we're not renting to you. Okay, that was a, a, a real deal and uh, uh, other historians have mentioned it and John describes that very thing. And Jesus' disciples come back to him and they say, uh, they, they wouldn't have anything to do with us. They wouldn't, uh, they wouldn't uh, help us at all. They, they would not help us make the, <clears throat> make the arrangements, uh, teacher. And as this report is coming, uh, <clears throat> Luke records that uh, James and John speak up. And do you remember that story? And they say, what, do, what should we do? He said, Master, teacher, Jesus, can we call down fire on them in this town? Can we call down fire on them? And uh, Jesus called them, James and John, the sons of Zebedee. What did he call them? What was their uh, nickname? What do we have from the Gospels? I got anyone else? I heard one. Sons of Thunder. <coughs> Pardon me. The sons of thunder. Why, why do I want to point that out? I want to specifically point that out and, re, and have that ready in your memory, plant that as a seed for your memory. When we work our way through uh, this letter, 1 John, and we get to portions of this, and where he uh, specifically, um, no, I'll just say, in his old age as we're writing this, and you think back, this was one of the sons of thunder that wanted to call down fire on people. So I'll just, I'll leave it at that, and, and that'll be uh, uh, fun to remember. Okay, that's what I wanted to do for that, uh, for the beginning, authorship and background. Okay, verse 1, and uh, we're going to dig into this uh, first four, uh, four or five verses, and um, also uh, make a connection back to the Gospel of John uh, for tonight, and then we'll keep going. Okay. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and have touched with our hands concerning the word of life, the life that was made manifest, we have seen it and testify to it and proclaim to you the eternal life which was with the Father has, was made manifest to us. I'll, I'll stop there that we've read this before. What, uh, I want to make this connection what themes, what ideas do you see right in there that connect us back to John's gospel already? Uh, we had one already mentioned. Uh, like, okay, from the beginning, right? You see that in the beginning. Right, right. And, and, and in fact, yeah, that's where we're going to go here with, with this in a little bit. But so it goes back to John's gospel starts out the same way with the beginning back to the beginning and then if you didn't hear Bobby said and even points all the way back to uh, Genesis right good what else uh, Wes did you say a second one what? the word the word yeah yes the word of life uh, right there so uh, so in what right the the logos and it's the same he's making the same reference here as well, the word of life. Good, good. What else? Anything else in these first few verses? Well, because he is the word of life, we see that God, and this is what John's saying, God made Jesus to where we can see him, touch him, hear, feel him, hear him, make him human for us. That's what he's saying here. It's, you know, we, we've handled concerning the word of life. We have looked upon and our hands have handled. God made Jesus so we can up and have that, yeah. that we can 
receive knowing that the word must be manifested to us. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's really, I, I don't always go with that as, as a first direction, but Bob, that's really good. If you didn't hear what Bobby said was, John said, God built Jesus for us <laughs> so that we could. No, I like that. Did, did you catch that? So that, here's, he's telling us this story about Jesus. And he says, Jesus was here in a manner so that we could hear and see and touch and uh, not, see and looked upon. I'm going to dig it and pull on that thread here in just a little bit. And touched with our hands. Yeah. Well, that, uh, that's what we, huh. the I like creation that. of our Lord and Creator, that's why we, have to, we want to be able to touch it. We want to be able to see it, to believe it. Now, we know that we do not get to see and touch Christ now, but we believe that. They had something to go with. They had it. They could see. They yeah, could touch yeah, it. They yeah, could hear it. Yeah, but yeah. when we were, read these words in our faith, yeah, yeah. we also have that in our heart. Yeah. And, and one of your favorites is, and, and, and Jesus said, blessed are those who didn't see and yet still believe. And, and uh, as we've gone through this study, uh, uh, Bobby pointed that one out. Uh, several times. Good, very good. Uh, what else? Anything else that you see right here? Uh, there's, we're, we're, I'm, I'm just trying to connect back to uh, uh, John's gospel as we've been, as we've been reading this. A good, yeah, really good connection. Yeah. 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 And he said, if you didn't hear, he said, this doesn't just leave it as a philosophy or an idea or a thought. It makes it real. So those two are good connections. Uh, now. Uh, I'm looking at this paragraph, and did somebody say something? Did I talk over? Did you, did I? And also, he's establishing that he was an eyewitness. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's the direction that, that, that certainly I look at when I see this, and I think, look at this here as he's saying, uh, we witnessed this, not just even eyewitness, but ear, ear witness, and, and being able to uh, you know, touch with our hands. And, and uh, we see that at the end of John's Gospel, uh, where we see the resurrected Jesus uh, providing uh, breads and, bread and fishes. Fishes? Fishes? Fishes. Fish. Bread and fish uh, for, uh, for the disciples on the, on the side of the, uh, of the lake. Um, yeah, very good. So here we see he, he's establishing himself as we are witnesses. Now um, we're gonna I'm I'm gonna tackle this right here. The word we he uses the word we here in in verse two, and uh, we figure okay who who were the eyewitness touching witnesses uh, of Jesus? So we have um, well no I'll leave that as a question. Who were the ones that that we would easily point to? And say, okay, they were the ones who touched and heard and saw and. Yeah, the apostles, right, right, and and uh, uh, that's that's who. If if you were to have your Bible open on your left knee and a and a, uh, a commentary open on your right knee, and you were reading these things, most of our commentaries would say he, he's he's writing he and the other apostles uh, that were with Jesus all the time. These are the, these, this is what we have witnessed. Okay, so we'll check off the comment, the comment about we there. Okay, so that which was from the beginning, which we have heard. Okay, from the beginning, points to John, points further back than that even. We've seen uh, with our eyes, we've looked upon and we have touched. Looked upon. Um, 
notice he says we've seen and we've looked upon and yes indeed uh, John uses a different word there he doesn't just say it to think this is sort of an example of this uh, idea of amplification he's saying two things uh, similar but he's, he's re repeating himself to a certain extent but he's adding something to that um, uh, te aomai is uh, the Greek word that would have represented this second time looked upon te aomai and it, it is uh, a word that uh, um, would say studied we looked at we studied uh, we looked upon intently be a word that means that we didn't we didn't just uh, uh, drive by and here okay yeah this happens we didn't just drive by and see the message on the sign we we came around the corner here pulled into the parking lot and stopped and got out of the car and took a picture of the sign that happens all the time uh, people do that so it, we didn't just look at it we stopped and we looked at it we made we, we made a, a, we, we studied this okay um, concerning the word of life Wes mentioned the word of life here this is back to uh, his reference to Jesus the life that, and, and indeed the, the logos there the life that was made manifest we have seen it and testify to it and proclaim to you the eternal life which was with the Father and it was made manifest to us. Notice that, the, the eternal life, not, not some status of being, the eternal life that was with the Father, right? That's, again, he's describing Jesus, making that reference um, that we have seen and heard proclaimed to you. Uh, so that, okay, that we have seen and heard, we proclaim to you, so that, class, let's tick off the three things that he has here. Verse three, so that. What, what, what's the so that that John has for us? Fellowship. Fellowship. So that you, uh, you too may have fellowship with us so we're bringing this witness to you this story to you with it so that we can that we can have fellowship together uh, okay i'm going to pause there and come back to that i think let's do the rest of the list so that what fellowship so that what okay, with us and there's an and Very good, very good. Now what, so, what, go ahead. I'm not an English scholar, but uh, let's go back just a touch here. Okay. Manifested, the end of uh, the second verse, which was with the Father and was manifested to us. Yes, the word was, but one other thing, what was manifested to us? Eternal life, if there is. Now, that's what it means to me. Um. Okay. I have access okay. because it has been manifested to me because I have become a child of God, okay. a child, a brother of our Lord and Savior. So that has been manifested to me if I do the commandments that I'm supposed to be doing. Okay. Um, now I've been told okay. I need to do things, more things well, than some people no, thought. But, but here's what I'm, I'm just... I'm debating in, in up here. Okay, so, but here, Bobby, I see manifest, and I see this uh, as uh, actually that phrase describing what you had presented a few minutes ago—that Jesus Himself was made manifest. That the 
uh, the word and the eternal life that was with the Father was made manifest or given presence, given presence, uh, given uh, the bodily form, Jesus, so that we could touch him, just as you said before. I love that. Uh, so it made manifest to us so that we could know God, the Father. Okay. That's uh, fair. Okay. So fair enough. Yeah, right, 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 right. Um, Yes. Okay, that's one. Yes, you know like, yes. Yeah. There, there are certain things that are bad, and then there's internal issues with the church, probably. There's things going on that, you know, he's like, hey, wait a minute, I've seen Jesus. He's yeah. right there. Yeah. I touched him. I've seen him. I've studied him. Yeah. That's where you, you know, your faith is coming through me telling you this also. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that's how it's made a manifest. Of the sure. Right. I, I, always, I, always like, uh, I always like to bring the text forward. To us in time, forward in time to us, uh, but we, f- we first I want to be true to um, true to the reading first, and then make the application to us. So, <clears throat> uh, so I'm inclined to say to st- you know stick with the idea that here we have Jesus being made a physical presence for them, and now all this these witnesses are left for us for us down you know. Down the length of time. Which brings you to the first third verse. Ah, right. That which we have seen and heard, we declare yeah. to you. I'm the you. Yes, you are there. So therefore, that manifest back to the yeah. judge from the Lord is yeah. being declared to me. Yeah. So therefore, yeah, I, I see yeah. Love I it. see both sides yeah. of it. Yeah, yeah. No, that's 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 fine. That's fine. As as any any way that we can bring the text forward and, and in time, I mean to us, uh, and, and uh, bring it to life in any way, I, I think that's, uh, that's probably a good exercise. Now, this fellowship, um, let's start with this first of all, that we have uh, seen and heard spoken, that we too may have fellowship so that you too may have fellowship with us and I, I just want us to think about uh, we could go to a movie theater and a uh, hundred people in the room and we'd have no contact with anybody doesn't even have to be that intimate. We could go shopping in Walmart, right? There's a couple hundred people in the building, right? And we don't really have any connection to them, right? They're just, they're just there. Um, we're just there. Just no real connection, right? Now, we could say, uh, we could go to a, a class, and we could say, we take a class uh, together just on any generic topic, and we could say, well, we have a connection based on, on that. Um, next level, the idea of saying, you know, Jesus said, I will build my gathering, my ecclesia, my, we translate it as church, but meaning my gathering of people. Jesus is going to gather his people together around himself and the word of God. And, right? and, and John says, I want you to have the closest, most intimate social connection that, that uh, we could have, and it's based on this. Uh, 
John says, I want you to be connected with us, with himself and the the other apostles. We want you to be connected with us. Not just because we um, have any other history or have any other uh, connection in this uh, uh, earthly connection, I'll say. We have a connection built on our relationship with God, our fellowship together based on our shared belief and understanding in, in Jesus and then that and also um, the fellowship with, with God the Father and his son Jesus Christ at the end of verse 3. That felt more clunky coming out than it should have, but uh, um, do, you, do you get the, are, are you with me on this, that we're having a fellowship uh, I, th- I think my problem is we experience what we call church family. We experience this, and I'm tr- maybe I'm having a hard time putting it into words, and what I really want to say is this connection is deeper than just parking in a parking lot on Sunday and walking in and sitting down. Does that make sense? Does anybody have a better way to say that than I do? Again, it, it is the love of God <laughs> yeah. that is wanting a relationship with us. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The older God wants a relationship, yeah. little G God. Yeah. They want to be worshipped. Whatever, whatever it is. Our God, the God, is wanting a relationship with us. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm writing that down because we're going we'll, to build on that because it's not just the, the Greek mythology that we would know of, but also the other, you mentioned the other religions that are, that are active at the time. And a very strong thought, a very strong Greek thought was body here, spirit there. Body, spirit good, body bad. Uh, spirit uh, good, striving to be good, body always bad. Um, in fact, Paul works with that in, in some of his writings. and said, look, he, um, he addresses a belief that so the body's so bad, it doesn't matter what we do in the body. Sin away. It doesn't matter because the body's always bad, but we keep the spirit pure. Uh, that's not Jesus' teaching. That's not, that's not God's teaching of how he built us. Uh, okay, uh, we, I stopped, we have I stopped you. Because of the love that God has given to us and that relationship, that uh, fellowship of where we got headed, that fellowship comes through God, through Christ, to us, and back. Yeah. Yeah. Our fellowship together tonight, when we come together to worship, is a lot more meaningful than just, as you say, pulling up and drive and coming in. Yeah. Yeah. If it isn't, and that's what we want. And so, and this fellowship here is actually that overriding theme that I said we, I highlighted life and love and truth as far as the amplification uh, technique. But he comes back to fellowship. Again, we want to be fellowship with God, fellowship with one another, fellowship with God, fellowship with one another. Okay, now here's the word. Here's where we find, uh, among other places in the New Testament, I mean, but, but here, John writes and uses koanonia. And, and this is uh, a, a, uh, a Greek word uh, meaning, he uses for fellowship, meaning partnership, literally a, a sense of participation, uh, social intercourse, uh, benefaction, doing something for the benefact, ben, uh, uh, to help others, <laughs> benefaction, uh, communicate, communication, also uh, uh, contribution or distribution. Uh, I have uh, here, um, in fact, in uh, Romans fifteen twenty six, where Paul writes about uh, those please them in the Macedonia and Achaia to make a certain contribution to the poor or for the poor to the saints uh, from the saints. Uh, this uh, uses the same word that contribution that benefit uh, to benefit others, and then communion. It's the sense of of uh, a, a strong connection, a strong communion, a strong relationship. A relationship that benefits one another, that is socially intimate. Uh, the word that's, that's so, uh, uh, sure, participation. But yeah, yeah, participation uh, coming together. 
uh, for oneness. And we are writing these things to you so that our joy, others will translate this as your joy. But at any rate, it's our joy or your joy. He's writing this to us so that our joy may be complete. Again, complete um, in our relationship and because of our relationship with God. Uh, this is the message we've heard from him and proclaimed to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. You want a relationship that you can trust. Above all else, God it is. God it is. Yes. Yeah. Good. Good. Okay, so let, let's... Oh, just to add to that, I mean, I think there's a reason that Jesus said, you know, wherever two or more are gathered, there I am there also. Am. Like, there is something so, I mean, not supernatural, but we supernatural. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, the love of being together. Bingo. Hang, yeah, yeah, yeah. Love being, uh, yeah, Eddie. Yeah, th thank you. Love, there's, we miss something if we don't have that. Uh, yes, yeah. Thank you, Mary. Ed. Yeah, yeah, very good. We can know that we have this eternal fellowship with the Father. Absolutely, absolutely, we can know it. Um, five minutes, shall we do this? Let's do this. Uh, Wes, would you turn to Genesis uh, 1, 1, uh, 1, 1, 1, 2. And hey, Nathan, if I asked you to, would you turn to the Gospel of John? One, one, two, and three, and we're all we're already here at uh, at uh, uh, First John chapter one. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and we have touched with our hands, concerning the word of life. Nathan, do you have the Gospel of John, chapter one, verses the first three verses? Real loud. Well, verse 4, then. Yeah, thank you. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, what has come into being in him is life, and the life was the light of all men. All. There. See, we see all of those things. That the word is present. The word is from the beginning. That word we have seen with our own eyes from the beginning here in this one. Now, uh, Wes, we have uh, Genesis 1. Okay. 1 and 2. I know these first two verses. Now, we'll, obviously, the first four words in the beginning and the fourth word, it's not actually in this order if we had the Hebrew in front of us, but we don't care about that. We're reading the English, and it's all pretty much the same. In the beginning, God. And how did he create? 
Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. He spoke. Yeah. Okay. That would be chapter two and three. All right. He spoke everything into existence. Right. 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 We know that. he spoke that. And then at the end of that uh, West, that last phrase in, in verse two, who else is? I'm saying who? Who else is mentioned here? The last thing you. The, the last phrase. And there we have the the spirit of God. And so we we literally have. Uh, and I'm going to get to one uh, last verse here. And if you want to write this down, the next one I'm going to is uh, John 20, 22. If you want to write these. So 1 John 1, John 1, Genesis 1. And we have, we have the, the Father doing his creation through the Word, through the Son, and with the Spirit there always and in that old testament reference we have that same uh pattern that we mentioned during our study of uh, uh the gospel of john and we said uh when the spirit is referenced there's uh, pneuma is the word that's always used uh in the new testament and that is uh we hear pneumatic we hear that word that we uh, adopt in 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 our uh, Current language, pneuma, the air, the air that we breathe. That's the same word for spirit. <sighs> breathe. And the same is true in the Old Testament. Ru, uh, it sounds better in the Old Testament. Ruach. And it's one of those uh, Hebrew words that you that you really do get to you, you get to <sighs> yeah, right, right. You get to you get to get that uh, that that chutzpah behind. Uh, that's a different word, but the, uh, the, you get to get all right. Ruach. That's spirit. And it's the same as breath. It's always the same as breath. And it's the illustration. Jesus says uh, to Nicodemus, chapter 3, you, you, you hear the wind blow. You hear the wind blow. You don't know where it goes, but you see the evidence. The spirit, he's using the same thing. John chapter 20, verse 2. Again. Jesus appears with the disciples. When he said this, uh, verse 20, he showed them his hands and his side and his disciples were glad uh, when they saw the Lord. Verse 21, Jesus said to them again, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. He, he breathed on them. The, we, we, pneuma, pneuma. In this phrase, he breathed on them and said, receive the spirit. I love the callback. We've used that word in John's writing. He calls back to Genesis 1-1 at the beginning of John 1 and first letter, 1 John 1-1. He calls back all the way to Genesis 1, to the beginning. And he includes in here the spirit, the breath, uh, the word is with them. Um, <coughs> thoughts on that? I think it's kind of cool. I love that first album of the book. That really speaks to Yeah, yeah, very good. Uh, Eddie said it really, that really speaks, it really speaks to him. It's right there. Uh, and, and so we... Um, Back to that John 20, uh, 22. Here, Jesus uh, breathes on them and says, receive the Spirit. And, and think about that with, with Adam, that, that crowning uh, accomplishment, uh, or yeah, the, the crowning cre creation, uh, crowning point of creation. And, and God breathed life into it. And here we have the, the breath of life and now here at the, uh, is Jesus' resurrection. Here's the breath of the Spirit. He said they had received the Holy Spirit. Uh, okay. Good. Okay. Uh, thoughts? Other thoughts? Thoughts? Yes. Oh, good. Right. That, thank you for bringing this all the way. Wes said, sounds like John's writing that to me. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Very good. Very good. Uh, bring us all the way back. Okay, uh, just 10 verses. We'll finish uh, chapter 1 of uh, 1 John uh, next week. And this walking in the light, and here we go. Uh, 
This is the message we've heard that we proclaim God is light. Um, I'll leave a teaser question, a teaser question with you. Uh, the, verse 3 ends with the uh, Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And let's look for how John wants us to think about Jesus and his relationship with God and God and his uh, relationship with Jesus. And uh, who, who's he talking? What God is he talking about? Um, there, oh, that's, a, that's maybe a crazy question. So you got to come back next week and see uh, what, I, what we do with that. Thank, what's that? Yeah, that last one. All right, fun, good. All right, let's, uh, let's end with a prayer, if you would please join me. Heavenly Father, thank you for today. And thank you for blessing us and loving us. Thank you for this uh, word that we have in Scripture uh, recorded for us. We have John giving us his uh, eyewitness uh, connection to Jesus. Thank you that we can have a connection in fellowship with one another and with the Father and his Son. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Or something like that. Or something like that. Good, good, good. Good, good night. Here this year. I'll get back to you. Oh, okay, because uh, yeah, I can't get it. I probably won't be able to get it off anyway. I was just curious. Somebody was asking. I think we're going to get it. Well, uh, we'll see. Yeah, it was up in the air. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unfortunately. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. It got too hot to make the air anyway, so I don't know. Yes.
And I will see Santo, 